So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Really, this is the final um, breakout um, se seminar session there. And it's about integration, the whole theme of what we've been talking about. It will be taking on from um, the experiences that uh, Matthew, if, if some of you were here for the first uh, breakout session, um, had in respect of the, um, his journey um, in, 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 in not only the platform changes and things like that, but also in respect of how integration has aided and assisted them. So in integration there. We all know that there is an increased um, workload and demand, especially on the IT and the systems people. Um, you know, they have got a, a difficult job in, in respect of adding value and bringing innovation really within the, within the teams of people that they, they work with. And we are going to just uh, go through that and have discussions in respect of that. There's lots of different technologies available, and it's, it's how best to use these technologies and integrate them within the systems that you would have. Our approach is a tailor-made one. Um, earlier on there, from, from Matthew there, we were talking about a, a legacy database in respect of how you can integrate that legacy database um, with the um, telephony platforms that you would have. And you know, we, we do use the best of breed technologies there. A key element of this as well is, is levering, levering the existing investments that you would have. It's trying to get the best out of those investments so that um, you can you know, make, make best use of, of technology. We have our own in-house teams and um, we can provide that bespoke development and a range of information, a, a, a range of applications and middleware that we have. And obviously, we are the partners that actually help manage that change. Our technology mix is made up of, of these elements. Each of these elements is very important, but the key to it all is actually bringing those, all, all those elements together in an integrated way. So we'll look at um, on the SIP side of things there. We have a carrier grade platform, and we've been doing SIP now for over 10 years. Um, and this is way before any of the PBXs or the VoIP systems um, had any integration for SIP trunking, the outbound and inbound uh, method of um, getting calls. Um, the development that we did originally was interesting because it was with the office um, of the local regional government offices, which was at the time, it was the office of the Deputy Prime Minister. Um, Mr. Prescott, as it was then, they had 11 sites around the country, and uh, they had something like about 6,000 users. They had um, 1,200 ISDN channels, purely for in and outbound traffic for the outside world, besides their own something called a GTN network, which was a government telephony network. And um, what we did from a consolidation point of view is bring those 1,200 channels down at 15 pound a, a channel per month to a, you know, to, I think we ended up with 400 channels, 400 concurrent channels, and that was a bursting model that they had there um, at a, a third of those costs. So they, you know, massive savings there. The IT director at the time said it was the most, um, innovative project that he'd actually worked on, and it was the one that made the most cost savings for that particular group. Um, it would have been good if they'd have made cost savings elsewhere, I think. But, you know, the other side of the, uh, the SIP trunking platform, by design, it was, it's a business continuity and, you know, sort of disaster recovery um, solution. Um, Historically, if you had an ISDN go down, it was a nightmare to try and get it redirected. If you got it redirected, eventually, um, you'd only have the bearer number as opposed to all the DDIs that go on it, um, fraught. And it, 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 was, it wasn't really fit for purpose. So our development by design is all about the business continuity elements of the failover and resilience. Um, and it, it's got to be a key component. So from uh, this morning's um, or this afternoon's discussions there with uh, Jonathan and the, the feedback, you know, SIP was the most important uh, technology. SIP trunking was the most important technology to the majority of the audience that was there. And, you know, I've talked about the cost savings that it delivers as well. And 
you know, the, the, it, you know there's a, it also supports a range of, of uh, connectivity options and things that we've added into the platform besides the call routing, you know, the conversion from the ISDN into SIP. We've talked about, I've talked briefly about the, uh, the disaster recovery and business continuity side of things there. But we've also got other applications and services that we overlay onto it. One of them is PCI DSS. Uh, and basically, that is, if you, uh, your organization takes credit card payments, you need a secure method of, of actually making, uh, taking these payments. And with NetX as well, there is a, a variant that was there. It's, it's an option that you would have. Um, and by call, you know, having that particular option, basically, it would take all the tones away. They would never even be given to the recorder a, a completely secure environment you know, for um, transactions and payments there. IVR, um, natural, of course, coming in. We, we write bespoke IVR sort of applications there based on NetX. We do Net SMS. Um, basically, if you're having a need to send SMSs out to um, update people on appointments, to advise people that a package is going to be delivered, or whatever the applications are, we have an integrated solution for that. And more recently, we've in also included uh, a NetEx um, email to fax service, and this is based on our clients and customers' requests. So I would like to be able to do it. We've been doing inbound um, fax to email for many years, but we've now added the out as well as the inbound into it. Fax you know, may well be a dying sort of technology, but it's still very useful, um, especially for certain industries. On the CTI side of things there, which is a, a, a key theme in, in respect of what, we're, what, we're, what we've been um, discussing through different uh, uh, breakout sessions today, it is, it's an absolutely key advantage to be able to link multiple um, different packages to the telephony platform. You know, not only the screen pop, the out dialing, it's, it's about the database integration. We use our middleware, which is NetConnect, which is a, uh, a mature product. Um, it's a very powerful product. We support in excess of, well, we support 63 different telephony platforms so that um, if you have disparate systems, whether that might be a Siemens, a Nortel, and a Via, a Mitel, uh, a Panasonic, uh, you know, different variants of, of, of phone systems that's there, NetConnect can actually integrate with that out of the box, so there's no spe specific, you know, uh, you know, clever stuff that we'd have to do to actually make it work. We've already done those, those works that's there, and we can then enable those platforms for inbound and outbound dialing. Going on to Microsoft Link, the, the seminar, uh, the, the breakout just now from Robert there was talking about Link and, and the advantages of it. Uh, but we have our own complete um, ecosystem for, um, for, for Link. In principle, uh, our, our centralized ecosystem there, it's for Link and Enterprise. But there's four elements to this. It's applications, infrastructure, cloud, and connectivity. From an applications point of view, also using the NetConnect technology that, uh, that we have there, out of the box, we've got 30 different applications that um, will link with Link, so that it will integrate with, 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 with Link itself. And these are from you know, SAP, so, you know, Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics, um, CRM, it's not just this sort of thing that's there. We've also got bespoke capability to be able to provide um, in linking into um, legacy databases or databases and, and, and systems that you may have uh, as an organization. And it's, it's a good way of actually um, levering the technology that you've got now and actually adding value as part of a process going forward. And obviously, that isn't just with Link, that is with any telephony platform.
connecting to PBXs. I mentioned the fact that um, we, we, can, we support um, over 60, with 63 different PBXs, and it enables us, or enables yourselves there, to have a, a, you know, a relatively seamless migrationary path you know, for bringing those um, a different solutions and systems into and under one umbrella. And, you know, it, it's a key thing of, uh, you know, with, with Link as well, because Link is a relatively new solution that's there, although, you know, it, you know different iterations of it now. But from a voice side of things there, you may well want to lever your existing investment in the telephony platform that you've got. So you would be able to still use your existing handsets um, whilst getting the advantages of, you know, things that Robert was going through earlier there, of, of presence and availability. And we can provide presence and availability, as I say, across all of those you know, 60 different uh, telephony platforms. So it's, it's a very good enabler. Connect Plus in the cloud. We provide a completely, bes well, it's, it's a bespoke, every, every, every customer has got individual requirements that's there, every different solution that we have. We provide private cloud in our data centers. That's one of the options that we have there. Another option would be to, you know, to use other clouds. It could be uh, Azure, it could be Amazon, it could be Google. So, you know, we can actually provide the, the service and support th through, through, um, through different cloud infrastructure. And obviously, we could also provide the infrastructure through your own data centers. So, you know, we can provide it if you have your own data center and you want us as a resilient data center, or you've got two, dis you know, two different data centers with resilience, we can provide that as well. Um, we integrate uh, with Office 365, um, and we provide that ability to outdial. One of the things that um, Robert was going through there was about the ease in which you can federate and you know, call and, and have information relating to federated sites for on link. But um, you also have to be able to make outside well calls. And our integration provides that, uh, the ability for us to um, integrate both the inside as well as the outside of, of you know, so out, customers not on link basically, callers coming in, you know, potential clients or, or clients and things like that. Connecting with people. Key thing, as we were talking about there, is, is the SIP trunking. You know, our systems have got native inter integration within, within our NetEx uh, platform. The, um, it can integrate across the multiple different PBXs and things like that. We can provide you with unified dial plans so that um, you've got a common dialing plan across the whole of the organization that's there. Uh, you've got supply chain, chain continuity there. We have, we have our own billing platform, so bespoke billing is, is, is there. Naturally, all part of everything that we're doing is about business continuity, you know, disaster recovery, resilience. The other side of things there as well is that uh, Link natively doesn't have geographic and non-geographic numbering. You know, we provide all of that, in, uh, that part of that infrastructure side of things that you would need, whether it be international numbers, we can federate you know, with presence integration with those 60 plus telephony platforms, as well as obviously native link. In summary, you know, a, a, a successful link deployment, it has to deliver more, you know, than you started with. And the ability for us to lever the existing uh, investment that you guys have made within the estate that's there makes it a more easy, easy way to adopt. It might have a policy of migrating ultimately to Link, but it gives you a stepping stone and a platform in which to, to move forward. And um, our ecosystem, it makes it very easy to adopt. Reporting is one of the other elements of the, uh, of the uh, jigsaw that we saw there, and it's absolutely key. Because from a reporting perspective, it is all very well having the infrastructure in place but you need to have effective reporting and alerting so that you can actually better manage the, 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 your solution or us to be able to better manage the solution for you 
and have more confidence in what we're doing. You know, we write bespoke plugins, you know, for different applications and services that are there, and we sort of make sure that we lever the best out of it. You know, we can put intelligence within it. If a service stops, we can tell it to say, okay, it stopped, what are we gonna do with it? We're gonna make it, we're gonna restart it, we're gonna monitor it again. So it's about automation and process that's there. The, the you know, web pool has got real-time visibility, it's got the, you know, naturally it's got the historical statistics, it's got benchmarking. It is all managed as well through our 24-7 NOC uh, solution, not, not facility. Um, and it is naturally tailored to integrate with the whole solution. So whether that um, is, is within the voice platforms, we can even integrate your existing um, requirements. If you've got servers that are managing your CRM or your database, we can actually provide you with uh, that as part of a visibility across the whole of your estate. We can you know, provide remote probes, we can do the plugins uh, as well, you know, bespoke tailoring, tailoring for your requirements. From a cloud perspective, you know, we are in, you know, three tier three data centers. We have two within, within cent central London and one, one outside of, of London. We are, you know, highly resilient carrier agnostic um, network as well. With the sort of Venn diagram that we've got there, you know, we, we use the best of breed. You've got the VMware, you've got the SAN, you've got the Cisco Brocade as well as the different um, solutions that we've got. Um, Jonathan mentioned earlier that um, in the Gartner quadrant, the top three, oh, there's four within that quadrant, three of those, you know, we are serious partners with, and that, those three being Mitel, Avaya, and Microsoft. We link, you know, with Microsoft, we have the link obviously there, and we've got recording capabilities. We use the best of breed as well in respect of the interconnections. All of the data centers are fully interconnected resiliently all together. So, you know, we use uh, BT, Level 3, and Verizon as, as our um, partners of choice in respect of that. Um, we also have our own, like, you know, we mentioned before about the reporting and monitoring, but also orchestration. Orchestration is, is to do with the fact of when we're looking at um, new um, variances, new, new upgrade options and things like that, whether that be a Microsoft one or, or we need the platform to, be, to go through an upgrade process, we're on level seven, we need to go to level eight or level whatever it may be. Our orchestration layer enables us to more effectively uh, manage that solution so that if we have an update as an example to our um, SPC, you know, for the, you know, the SIP trunking and things like that, which is by portal, you know, we literally can say, right, here's the new one, guys. Go and hone in, get the update, and, and carry on. You know, historically, you would have had to, it would have been a very major event of actually going to each one of those. And bear in mind, you know, sort of five or 600 of these out there. Our dedicated knock is a, you know, 24-7 operation. And you, depending on the resilience options that you may take, five nines uptime um, availability. It's built for real-time applications. It's voice ready. And the voice is you know, our sort of legacy pedigree that, that's there. And so we know how critical voice is. Latency is not a part of what we do. And the whole thing is all about the migration and integration of the existing technologies. We want you to lever the um, investment that you've made already. In respect of the future, um, NetX, very strong, very powerful platform. Uh, you know, Matthew was talking about it earlier in, in, the, in the Trail Finders um, aspect, uh, seminar um, side of things there. Um, it is exceptionally powerful, but we always look to the future. You know, one of the comments was made at, um, um, this morning of saying, have you got an in innovation strategy? And there was about a couple of people put their hand up. You know, I put my hand up most definitely. Yes, we do have an innovation strategy. We look always to see how we can add value, how we can use technology to benefit our, our, our partners, because they're not just custom, you know, it is a partner solution that we look, for, look to. Within the NetX2 side of things there, mention has been made today about big data and utilizing that data 
are making the most of it. With NetX2, it's, it's got a very powerful analytics engine. The analytics engine will provide a whole range of information that's there. And for those that have been on the platform you know, a number of years, we will provide the historic information so that you, you, know, you would be able to then in, investigate, you know, have a look into, run reports to see you know, how patterns have changed. You know, Trail Finders mentioned the fact that um, their busy period is the January the 1st to the middle of, uh, middle of um, uh, February, hopefully late February. <laughs> but, um, and they would be able to look at it year on year to see how they've made improvements in respect of, of the calls, how many lost calls were there, what the volumes, how they were handled, how they were managed. And this information will be available you know, historically. But obviously, you've got to start somewhere. So if you're not on the platform already, once you're on the platform, you would be able to look at that from that point forward um, and have, those, uh, have the information there. There will be, there is effective APIs in there so that if you've got other applications, marketing type applications there, you would be able to feed in all of the, the cool information as well to make more use out of the, of the data that you would have. I've talked a little bit about orchestration and really that's about the platform management enhancement and that is the sort of things that we are very closely and very carefully looking at. And we're also introducing, and um, some of the speakers today, both uh, Avaya and Mitel, were talking about the, 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 the flexibility of, of scaling up and scaling down. A licensing model that will enable you to, during peak periods, rent more licenses and you know, low, you know, not so peak periods, reduce the number of licenses and pay for the licenses that you're using at that particular time. It's a different approach of, of having a, a, a capital expenditure and it's, it is, you know, it's a monthly recurring um, expenditure that was there. It's a different type of licensing model but this is something that we're introducing as well. Benefits, you know, we've got simple integration you know, with the ex extensive knowledge that we have and the teams that we have. Um, in, improved collaboration between staff and suppliers. If you've got a better experience, it's a better experience not only for the, for the client and the customer that's calling through, but it's also the, the staff members. You know, it, it's one of the comments today was the fact that, you know, the member of staff in the end loses the will to live because he keeps having to have the same problem to go through again and again. It enables a, a more effective collaboration approach. It le we can lever the existing investment that you've made within the technologies that are there. You can choose a migrationary path for whatever you want to do, you know, with the knowledge that the, the rest of it will carry on going and you can make the most out of the, of the investment that you've already made. We manage the, the migration, the improved management and, and, and visibility you know, with the reporting that, that is there and achieving excellent return on investment and value. And the value is, is the value that, to the organization, to the business, and to, the, to, the, um, to your clients as well. So thank you.